Okay, welcome to today's video everyone. Find the integral of e to the x times cos x dx and the integral of e to the x sine x dx. Okay, now when we look at this we see it's a product of functions in both cases so we're going to use, it might suggest that we use integration by parts. But there is another more interesting way of computing these two integrals and it involves the use of Euler's theorem. Now if you don't know, Euler's theorem says that e to the power i x equals cos of x plus i sine of x. Okay, and of course i is the imaginal unit which is the square root of minus 1. So we'll just note that i is the square root of minus 1. Okay, so how are we going to apply this? Well, let's call c this integral here, e to the x cos x dx. So we're calling it c for cos. And also, let's let s be this integral here, s for sine. So the integral of e to the x sine x dx. Okay, now let's consider c plus i s. Okay, so what's that going to be? That's going to be the integral of e to the x cos x dx plus, now since i is just a number, it's just a constant, we can bring that inside our integral. So it's going to be the integral of e to the x times i sine x dx. Okay, now a property of integrals is that when we have a sum of two integrals, then we can combine them into one integral. So we're going to have the integral of e to the x cos x plus e to the x times i sine x, all being integrated with respect to x. Okay, and we can factor out an e to the x here. So we get the integral of e to the x times cos x plus i sine x dx. And now we can apply Euler's theorem right here. And this, which is exactly what we have here, is equal to e to the power i x. So we have the integral of e to the x times e to the i x dx. Okay. Now, we know by using our index laws, that we can combine these two. So when we have a product, our ind indices will be added. So we're going to have e to the x plus ix dx. And then we can factor out an x here, and we get the integral of e to the 1 plus i times x dx. Okay, and now, this is in our standard form of e to the power of some constant times x. And we can integrate this. It's simply going to be 1 divided by the coefficient of x times this function, 1 plus i to the x, plus some constant, and I'm going to call it c. Okay, now, let's sort of work backwards. Well, first of all, let's realize this fraction here. So we multiply top and bottom by the conjugate. It's going to be 1 minus i. And on the bottom, we're going to have the modulus of this squared, which will be the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared, which is going to be just 2. Okay. And this here is going to be e to the x times e to the i x. Let's put brackets around this as well so we don't get confused. So this is e to the x times e to the i x, and of course, plus our constant. Okay, but what's e to the i x? Well, once again, by Euler's, Euler's theorem, right here, it's cos x plus i sine x. So we have, oh, not yet, we have 1 minus i over 2 times e to the x into cos x plus i sine x 
plus C. Okay. And now let's expand these brackets. So we'll leave this e to the x over 2 out the front. And when we expand these brackets, we're going to get cos x plus i sine x minus i times cos x. And then we're going to have minus i squared, which is plus 1 sine x plus c. Okay. Now let's collect our real and imaginary parts. So we're going to have e to the x on 2 times cos of x plus sine of x and then plus e to the x on 2 with an i out the front because this is the imaginary part. So i, so sine x minus cosine x and of course plus c. Now what was this equal to? This was equal to c plus is. Okay. Now after this we have a real part and an imaginary part and we can equate the real and imaginary parts from both sides. So equate real and imaginary parts. And what do we get? We're going to have that C is equal to, this is the real part, e to the x on 2, cos x plus i sine x. But that's not all, we also have this constant. Now in general this constant is a complex number, so when we equate the real part, that's going to be plus the real part of this constant C. Okay? And we have that S is going to be the imaginary part, e to the x over 2 times sine x minus cos x. But once again, we need the imaginary part of this complex number here, so plus the imaginary part of C. Okay, so what was C? Well, C was the integral, we can say therefore the integral of e to the x cos x dx is equal to this expression here, e to the x on 2 times cos x, whoop, that shouldn't be an i, cos x plus sine x plus, now we can call the real part of c, well that's just some constant, so let's just call it perhaps k, maybe k1, okay, so this is the value of this integral, and we can also say that, well what was s, s was the integral of e to the x sine x dx. And what's that equal to? That's equal to e to the x on 2 into sine x minus cos x. Plus, what was this? This was just some constant. Let's call it k2. Okay? And this is just another way, or more interesting way, of computing these two integrals here without actually having to use integration by parts. Hope you enjoy the video.